I mentioned the blue blazer earlier, you know, you talked about how Ray Mysterio, you know, in the eighties, the audiences might not have been ready for it. Obviously he has a different style and different size and all that than Owen was, but Owen debuted in the company as blue blazer. And I mean, I'll never forget watching that WrestleMania four or five match on just repeat with him and perfect, but I guess it was five. I, uh, I wanted to ask you, why don't you think the blue blazer had more success in the WWF in the eighties? I mean, I know we tried it much later, uh, but I'm saying the eighties version, like was Vince just not in favor of a mass wrestler back then or cause you had all these over the top gimmicks. I mean, we had a dude with a bird and a dude with a snake and we've got all these bright, colorful characters, the blue blazer. Why didn't that click more? Do you think I just don't think they audience didn't buy it audience didn't care for it Owen was a great worker oh yeah Owen did all, sure. all these all these spectacular moves and spectac- spectacular things but you know it was it was a nondescript character that just the audience didn't buy that's it's as simple as that sometimes the audience just doesn't buy it well for whatever reason they didn't really buy big van vader in the WWF, but he too was a masked wrestler, but it is a mask of a different sort. Of course he wore the giant head gimmick that that sprayed the steam. I mean, that was quite a presentation that we saw in Japan and in WCW, but what we really saw once he was wrestling and certainly through all of his WWF career was the Vader mask. It's unlike a lot of other masks. I mean, you're not really hiding the identity. Uh, what do you think of the, the Vader mask? Well, I liked it, you know, but, but even before that, Vader did wear a mask. Oh, sure. You know, and he, and he did wear a mask. He wore the eating mask, maybe because he liked to eat before he went out. But, um, but you know, he did wear a mask. And then I think that the, the Vader mask, you know, made out of the leather was a thousand times cooler and added to the mystique of Vader because he's, he's scary looking anyway. Take yeah. the mask off of him. He was still a scary looking dude, man. Big, big dude big nasty dude so you put the mask on him just adds a little more mystique to him and just made him a little mad a little nastier if you will brutus the freaking barber beefcake attempted to wear a mask once after his accident and uh i guess maybe he even did it once with fur and then he had hulk hogan with him at wrestlemania 9 and he's wearing a mask there chat me up about Brutus Beefcake's quote unquote protective mask. Well, it was a protective mask, and he had to wear that because he'd had his face caved in. Any blow to his face, he risked serious life threatening injury. So the mask was there to protect his face from any, you know, errant knee or anything to the face that could then cave in all that surgery that had been done. All right, let's just talk about that. Hypothetically, any chance he gets cleared to wrestle today? I mean, if what you just said is Oh true, God, no. That's what I say. There's no chance my man no. can ever wrestle again now. Yeah. No. But you know, the his doctors, you know, approved that mask. You know, and they were like, Yeah, you know, that this will protect it. But they also you were like, you also have to we and the talent he's in the ring with have to be very protective of him as well. You know, don't don't throw knees, man. Don't hit him in the face and things of that nature but no he'd never be in the ring again with the as the business evolved and allowing people to to work with something like that his career would have been over almost everybody for all intents purposes his career was over after that really yeah almost all of our uh, listeners have heard brad armstrong be described as one of the best in-ring workers of all time blah 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 he also wore the bad street gimmick and then maybe more famously arachna man did you ever see arachna man for wcw what'd you think of that thought it was horrible just a rip off spider-man i mean it's almost as bad as when you guys did the ninja turtles horrible we didn't do the ninja turtles you did once no we didn't you, you tried it it didn't air no we didn't we just let them go out and do their little gimmick that they did on independence but that was not that was that was not something that there was no so, way there was absolutely no way that that ever would have been considered on television right like ever but it did happen in a wwf ring yeah okay. sure did 
What, what about people uh, say we tried it out because it's something we wanted to do? Oh, 100% no. a false narrative. No, oh, y'all were just having fun. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of fun, the juicer over in WCW, it's uh, on the heels of the Beetlejuice movie. I know they were trying to appeal to kids, but the juicer, not technically a mask, but certainly aimed at children. I mean, this guy had worked his ass off down in Mexico and become a big part of a great tag team with Eddie Guerrero. Uh, obviously lots of controversy with, with Mr. Barr as well, but what do you think of the juicer presentation? I felt bad for art. I just, he was an incredible talent. Um, you know, had some issues, but it was, yeah, it, you know, it was a territorial gimmick where everybody was in on the joke because it was Art Bar um, that they did in Portland. That again, man, it, it it worked because it was Art Bar doing it in in Portland. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gimmick was not a Nash something that you could take national. It wasn't something because of the story. You know, they had you had to understand the story with art and going away and oh, he's the juicer now. And you know, same thing as the the uh midnight rider gimmick and everything. So you, everybody went in on the joke. And it just was came across kind of goofy. So um I wanted to ask you a little bit about you know, while WCW is doing what they're doing with Rey Mysterio and psychosis and Hooventude, you guys are trying in a similar era, some different type of mass wrestlers. Can you try to explain to me what the hell Aldo Montoya was? He's a soccer player from Portugal. Why is he wearing a mask? If he's a soccer player, why isn't he wearing like umbros? Because he was such a big soccer player that by God, you had to hide his identity. Jeez. Is oh, that hard to explain? It is. Well, hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple Podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like title chase, Eric fires back conversations with Conrad and the insiders plus new series like the book with David Crockett, Monday mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early. You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch alongs, Q and A's and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And Hey, when you do the first week is completely free Adfreeshows.com. <laughs> 